Hey guys, I'm finally on the field again, yay! I've been uh, really working hard lately in my uh, container darkroom producing dry plates. So really didn't have much time to go out and we, to be honest, had a lot of uh, bad weather anyway. But yeah, today I'm visiting a place that I already showed you in one of my previous videos. Let me turn the camera around. This canyon is called Predacel and it's really really deep as you saw. Uh, but at some point you can get all the way to the bottom of it and look straight in. And that's where I'm headed. I packed my uh, Intrepid 4x5 camera and brought two glad dry plates with me. So I will try to get to the spot now and uh, make two shots. I'm afraid that there is maybe too much, even too much water in the canyon because it was raining quite hard yesterday but I need to get down to, to see the situation uh, and also yeah it's 7.30 in the morning so it's really quiet, not many people so yeah I think it's gonna be a joyful shoot so follow me along This is a good indicator of how much rain we had yesterday. I would of course love to go to the mountains, but with so much new snow the risk of avalanches is just too big. At this point it started to rain so I decided to step under a rock overhang and wait for the rain to calm down. I was waiting for 20 minutes but it just kept on going. The view from where I was standing was actually quite nice so I've decided to make my first shot from my rock shelter itself. Alongside my Intrepid 4x5 and ISO 2 9x12cm dry plates I also packed a wide angle lens Schneider Kreuznach Super Angle on 90mm f8. Because of the rain it became really dark so my exposure was extremely long, 1 minute and 20 seconds at f8. I would love to shoot with a higher aperture for more sharpness but I just couldn't risk more vibrations from the rain. Thank you. 
I don't know what to do. It's been raining like this for half an hour and I really don't want to expose myself and go completely on the rain there. I've already made one shot at least but as you can see all, everything is wet completely. Um, I'm thinking of um, making another shot from the same spot right here but uh, just using a different exposure to at least have two shots because these water motifs are really quite hard to, to nail as uh, with long exposure they become really really bright I've waited for another 10 minutes and uh, rain calmed down for a little bit so I will try to make a, make a quick move I will leave my backpack and everything here and I will just take the, the camera with me and uh, run to that spot right there behind that rock It got much brighter, so my exposure for the second shot was 12 seconds at f8. Many of you would call me crazy for going out in this kind of weather but I love it because hard conditions like this are the ones that give these landscape shots their stories and make them memorable. There is no electronics in large format equipment so things just need to be dried properly and they are ready to go. Oh, finally back in the car. I don't know if there is still uh, any dry spots left on my body. I'm completely soaked and so is my camera which died off in the meantime but I hope it uh, ran out of battery. Anyway, um, I'm happy that I was able to take those two shots. Um, only developing will tell if they're any good. So yeah, I'm gonna drive back home now and um, try to see what I made. develop the dry plates by using Kodak HC 110 dilution B uh, for five minutes like usual and I'm gonna fix it with this other fix fixer right here I will mix up the solutions now and uh, then I can turn off the lights Okay, so I have my solutions ready now. Here is my uh, Kodak HC 110 Dilution B. I'm gonna develop for 5 minutes agitating for the first 30 seconds and then every half a minute for 5 seconds. After I'm done I'm gonna wash the plate in, um, in this uh, tray right here. And I'm gonna fix the plate for roughly around 3 minutes agitating constantly uh, until all the milky areas are gone and then the final wash and then I'm gonna dry the plates off on a drying rack. So yeah, let's turn off the lights and go.
when the negative on the second plate started appearing I was like where did this come from when I developed a bit further it hit me I have somehow mixed my plates in the box and loaded the one that was already exposed waiting to be developed what a moron I had to pull the plate out of the developer after a minute as it would be completely overexposed otherwise Plates are developed, this is the first one right here, I'm really pleased with it, it um, seems sharp and also the exposure is fairly good and the water doesn't seem to be completely overexposed which is a good thing. And the second one is uh, unplanned, uh, is it gonna focus or not? It's a uh, unplanned double exposure. <laughs> I obviously by mistake loaded one of my plates that I uh, am using for my reverse developing project and it was already exposed waiting to be developed. I uh, missed the marking that I made on the back side of the plate. So I'm gonna dry them now, scan them and uh, make a conclusion of this trip. I'm super happy with the first shot, like I said earlier, when exposures are really long it's really hard to expose the scene nicely without blowing out the water completely. Also sharpness is there despite the vibrations caused by the rain. Camera has probably moved when I inserted the film holder as the image is not sharp where I focused, but most of the details are in the foreground. The second one. Accidental double exposure that turned out to be quite interesting. It represents me in a way with water and nature on a horizontal plane and shipping container darkroom on the vertical. Before I end this video I'd really like to thank you my Patreons for your support in these hard times. It really means a lot. See you in the next one. Bye!